Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's been a while since I have talked about my Elmwood League and where everybody is and how I'm doing. And in this particular um, episode, I am also going to talk about um, a quirk in the game that I'm wondering if anybody else out there has noticed. And we will get to that near the end of the video to ensure that you watch the video. But um, in the meantime, let's take a look at the league itself and where everybody is and how the teams are doing. So we go to league stats. And you can see uh, I am in last place. Now, that's as usual. But tied to the quirk that I've noticed, um, I'm going to talk about this a little further because there's more to it than it appears. I am currently 52 and 70 and in last place in my division, um, but I am only three and a half games roughly behind Endwell. Um, and if we look at the... Um, Go look at the uh, team stats. As you can see, um, over the last 10 games, I'm 7 and 3. Now, let's go look at the daily log. Now, if you go back up here to 7 1, the beginning of right here, the beginning of July, uh, I'll do the math on this for you. Since then, I have been 24 and 15. And that is, again, tied to the quirk that I've noticed. Um, and I will give credit where credit is due also to the commissioner who made a suggestion. However, the commissioner thinks that his suggestion is exactly what happened to make this turnaround, and that's not it. Uh, I mean, that maybe had something to do with it, but that's not all of it. But let's go back and take a look at the league stats. And you can see um, Adams is in first place in their division. And uh, they are they have a five game lead on Kekianga. Uh In the other in our division, Federal Way is leading the way by a healthy ten and a half games over the Desert Dogs, who are sixty eight and fifty four. And again, in our league, this is uh, the top two divisions are one half of the league and the uh, bottom two divisions are the other half. So like it's almost like two leagues and uh, the top four. Well, the top the two division winners make the playoffs automatically. And then the next two best teams make it as wild card. So uh, right now, it would be Adams and Federal Way as division winners on our league, in our league, and then um, Keikianga and the Desert Dogs uh, would be the two wild cards. On the other side, you've got Philly winning their division by four games, and then you got Arnold and Painted in a death struggle at the top of their division. So right now, and then there's Washington that's only two and a half behind them. So right now, uh, the, uh, the winner of the Island Division would be Philadelphia, and the winner of the Southern Division would be either Arnold or Painted, and the other one would be a wild card. And, um, and then um, who the other wild card would be is really... Um, up in the air. I mean, it could be painted. Right now, it would be painted, but he's only a game or a half a game ahead of Kremlin. So we're going to see. Have to see how that plays out. Um, we will go take a quick look at the stats for my team, and you can see the team overall is hitting two thirty nine. Now, what I want to point out is usually, if you remember me doing these videos in the past about our league, you know I have terrible pitching. Terrible. Historically. Well, right now I've got a 411 team earned run average. So we're not doing too badly. And I got Presley and um, 
Presley and uh, John Curtis in a trade with Adams. So, and Presley, this is uh, a Presley, this is what he's doing for me. An ERA under half. And he has 20 strikeouts in 18 and a third innings. And uh, Curtis has a 212 earned run average in 29 and two thirds innings. Again, for me. These two guys were not doing very good for Adams, and um, that's why he sent them as part of a package to get some relievers from me because I dealt him Petit and um, and uh, Jake McGee. And you can see McGee wasn't doing anywhere near as good as either of those two. So that was that's part of what is causing the turnaround, is those guys pitching like they have. I also traded uh, Gosman, Kevin Gosman, to Philadelphia, and in return I got um, Castillo. Now Castillo is not great, and he uh, isn't even doing as well as Gosman did, but hasn't really had to. Um, and really, I mean, I'm not going to the playoffs anyway. So here are some guys. I also got Austin Dio in the uh, deal with Philadelphia where I sent him Gosman. Uh, he's hitting 257. I figured, you know, what the heck, take a flyer on him, see if he, um, I mean, I like the guy. So I figured, let's see what he does. Um, but anyway, that's uh, where we are. We're, I mean, we have terrible hitting. We're only hitting 239 with 150 home runs and 122 um, games played. So uh, that's where we are now. Let's get to the quirk that I've noticed that it really doesn't make any sense. And I wanted to see if anybody out there has noticed it. Um, we're going to take a look at some of my players to illustrate this. So we're going to go to player stats. Um, oh, yeah, let's go to, uh, uh, yeah, we have to pick a player. So let's, let's start with uh, Tyler Anderson, all right? Tyler Anderson, and again, we're going to use as a benchmark, we're going to go back to July 1st on the schedule for the, for the team, or for the league. So let's go to player stats for Tyler Anderson. You go back to before 7-1, he had an ERA of 506 and he was 3 and 7. Now you fast forward to the last game that he pitched and after that game he is now 6 and 7 with a 415 earned run average. So he's lowered his ERA dramatically and he's won 3 games while losing none. Let's take a look at another guy. Um, let's take a look at, um, to some degree, we're going to take a look at Lester, although I think he's kind of been up and down and all over the place. But on 630, Lester was 1-7 and seven with a 496. Now, his ERA has gotten worse, and he, but he's won two games um, while losing five. So really, this... This quirk hasn't really affected Lester. In fact, it hasn't really touched him at all. Um, but let's look at another guy. Um, and uh, who was that we were going to look at? Yeah, well, let's look at Ryan Yarbrough. You go back to, again, before 7-1, Yarbrough had a 2-8 and eight record, and a 7.01 earned run average. His ERA was 7.01. And remember, he was 2-8. and eight. Now he's 8-10, and 10, and he has a 5.76 earned run average. Again, the ERA has gone down dramatically, and the, um, and he has, uh, and he's gone uh, six and two, six and two record for him. Uh, so that is where we are now. The recommended change that the commissioner gave me was to put um, 
specifically two players, El Tuve and Tim Anderson, in different positions in the lineup. He said that would make the difference. Now, uh, if we look at El Tuve, and again, we're going to use the same, we're going to use the same metric. We'll look at 7-1. So 7-1 is right here. And in, on 7-1, he was hitting 210 with, is that home run? With 15 home runs. Now he's hitting 227 with 19 home runs. So since that recommendation, he's got four home runs and he's raised his average only from 210 to 227. Tim Anderson has been better. I'll give him, I'll give him the credit there. Tim Anderson has been better. If you look back at 7-1, Tim Anderson was hitting 214 with eight home runs, and now he is hitting 245 with 17 home runs. But he has been the and, – and then one other guy that we changed positions with, although he hasn't played a lot lately for me, is Grossman. We changed position in the lineup with him. And you can see on 7-1, he was batting 180 with 14 homers, and now he's hitting 188 with 17 homers. So he hasn't improved greatly either. So uh, I think that the recommendations from the commissioner were they had a minor impact, if anything. What I want to talk about is the pitchers, and again, the pitchers improved. Tyler Anderson improved dramatically. And um, Yarborough improved dramatically. And they're pitchers. So that has nothing to do with anybody being in the batting order. Um, and um, it maybe affects their win-loss record, but it doesn't explain how they got so much better at pitching. So how did that happen? Now, two of the other things that I did that obviously made a difference is I went out and got John Curtis, and he has been pitching great for me. And I went out and I got Presley from Adams, and he has been stupendous for me. He has been out of his mind. But the other thing that I did is we will go to um, – we'll go to team and um, computer manager. Update computer manager. And hopefully it will take us there. And so you can see um, Anderson. Here's Anderson. If we look at his setting, the settings that I have for him, you can see he's on slow hook. And, well, inning pitched less. There, you know, walk, walk less. But he's on slow hook. And I did that with my entire pos – oh, that's the other person I want to look at is Bubich. And so let's look at um, Chris Bubich. Player stats. You can see on 7-1, he was 3-3 three and three with a 634 earned run average. And now he is 6-5 and five with a 474. He improved dramatically as well. So, again, that has nothing to do with putting anybody in the rotation or uh, anybody in a different spot in the lineup. That has nothing to do with that, how the guy pitches. And, again, the wins lost, maybe that affects it a little bit if the guys in the lineup are hitting better. But it still doesn't affect them actually being better at pitching. So, um, we go again, we'll look at... Um, Team update computer manager. And again, it wants to take a few minutes to do that. I don't know why, but anyway. So Bubich, you look at Bubich, he is on slow hook. You look at um, Lester. I have Lester on slow hook, although, as I say, it really doesn't seem to have affected him uh, for the better. And you look at Yarbrough. He is on slow hook. I had my whole, I put my whole rotation on slow hook. And all of a sudden they started pitching better, which makes no sense. They were terrible before I put them on slow hook. And then I put them on slow hook and now they pitch better. They got the same card. And in fact, you would think if you gave them more time to pitch, they would be worse. Their statistics would be worse and they would be worse. 
and that that would not help at all. I also noticed another guy in the league has some pitchers that have been bad in the past, terrible, and he's done the same thing. In fact, he's gone even further. He has some guys, a couple of guys that he put on uh, don't let hell remove from the game. Again, they pitch much better after he did that. So it, it doesn't really, it doesn't make any sense. But I have noticed that that has happened, and it seems to be a weird quirk with the game. And it's something I intend to incorporate in the years to come uh, with my team. If I have a guy that um, isn't particularly good and um, isn't going to be as good as the other players on the team, you know, uh, put him on. Put him on slow hook and see what happens. See if that helps. Because it seems to have helped in my case. Uh, as I say, since July 1st, my team has been 24 and 15. I was terrible. I mean, I still am. But if we go and we look at the uh, standings, league stats, you go and you look at the standings, I am now um, the probably third, I, oh, I want to say the third worst team there's one two three i'm the fourth worst team in the league and i am just about to catch green lakes possibly if i keep winning like this um and maybe the bronx and possibly even end well eventually who knows and maybe also even bobtown so i could catch three or four other teams uh but i've already i've already passed two that because i used to be the second worst team in the league and now i am the fourth worst team in the league and i think that that has been due to a combination of three uh things moving a few players in the lineup to different places and now they're hitting better which also doesn't really make sense. Putting bad pitchers on slow hook, and now they've all of a sudden decided to pitch better when they're on slow hook, and obtaining a couple of relief pitchers from Adams, who uh, Adams, you know, they weren't doing well with Adams, and he sent them to me, and they're great for me. So, um, again, I don't know. That doesn't really seem to make any sense. But anyway, this is where we are. This is our standings. This is how I'm doing. So I, at least I've got a little um, something I can carry over into next year, and maybe it'll help me next year. Uh, right now, you know, and it, and I used to, I was in, if I was the second worst team, I was in line for the second pick in next year's draft. Now I'm in line for the fourth uh, pick in next year's draft, and it could be, it could get, even as bad as maybe the seventh pick in next year's draft. But I don't care. That's not as important to me as trying to figure this game out and figure out how it works and uh, figuring out apparently that you can take a bad pitcher and put him on a uh, slow hook and he's going to get a lot better. So what do you guys think? Has anybody out there tried that? Has anybody noticed something like that? Like when you mess up the player mix, um, and, and trade away players that should be good for you and you get players that are maybe not quite as good in return because you're building for next year, all of a sudden your team plays better. Or you put a bad pitcher on slow hook and uh, all of a sudden he starts to pitch better. Has anybody noticed anything like that? Because I certainly have. But uh, that is going to be it for me for right now. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.